Hey Bears, Eric here, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about a subject that is unique to the gay community, and that is internalized homophobia. Now, I've talked about it before on this channel. It's been a minute since I've talked about it. It's like back of the day. It feels like forever. It was last year sometime. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to sort of revisit the topic so I could talk a, in a bit more detail about my own experiences with internalized homophobia, which I did not talk about in the previous video, and RuPaul's comments here where she's shading masculine white gay men who project internalized homophobia. So let's go, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. Let's read through this article. We'll get through this and then I'll give my thoughts and opinions on it and talk about my own experiences. Uh, before we do that though, if you go in to enjoy this video, join the revolution, hit subscribe, become part of the channel over here. Join the Eric verse, leave a like and a comment down below and let's dismantle the system from the inside. This algorithm problem that we have here on YouTube. The icon dove into the topics in his new memoir, The House of Hidden Meanings, where he recounted his experiences as a black gay youth in 1970s Atlanta. RuPaul revealed that at times he felt a disconnect between himself and the two communities. I was confused. My understanding was that every gay person had the same experience that I did. Uh, he told that to Out Magazine's sister publication, The Advocate. I felt that thinking outside the box had to do with being gay, but that really wasn't the case. On one hand, RuPaul witnessed a religious black community that would practice piety by day, but would visit a brothel with a transgender sex worker by night. On the other hand, he experienced a queer community made up of masculine white gay men who scorned anything ethnic or feminine. RuPaul explained that even uh, as his career gained traction, he would cross paths with masculine white, white gay men who looked at me with a kind of seething hatred, a self-loathing turned outward, their internalized homophobia like a sneer of contempt. Now, RuPaul has said some controversial stuff in the past, and there's some sketchy stuff going on with RuPaul. We all know about the fracking, stuff like that. We know about it. There's sketchy stuff. And RuPaul's not always been on the right side of the argument. Uh, however, I have to say, I totally understand where RuPaul is coming from here, uh, from my experiences being around other gay, white, masculine men and how they treat people outside of that bubble. It is a very different world. Uh, the world of like the pretty gays, the guys who work out in the gym, you know, every single day of the week and go to the beach every single weekend and just live this life of like hyper-masculinity. It is a very different world from other facets of the gay community. I can't tell you how many times I've been around other people who would follow that demographic and they talk about how uh, they don't like drag. We're, we're not we're not the typical gay person. We don't like drag. We don't go shopping. We don't, you know, color our hair. We don't do our nail. Like they, they just, all of it is done with contempt. So there are no lies detected in what RuPaul is saying. And it's not like I need to validate RuPaul's experience. I'm not saying that, but I'm just confirming that I also have seen this as well. He goes on to say, as I got older, I realized there were different experiences. When I found my true tribe, what we had in common was thinking outside the box. We were bohemians who recognized that the emperor wasn't wearing any clothes. Our creed was don't be fooled by the superficial, get to the realness. And I have to say, I totally agree with that. As someone who is an artist myself, I don't like the idea that everything has to be a certain way all the time. I do like the idea that things can be played around with that uh, gender roles can be played around with, that fashion can be played around with, that all these other identities and things that you do in your life can be molded and changed. Uh, because to me, that is art. All of that is art. And so I've always looked at it that way. Even growing up, when I was younger, uh, in as far back as like middle school, um, I knew that I was very different from everybody else around me. And actually, that's not very uncommon for younger gay people, younger queer people. You code switch at times so that you fit in with everybody else. And because of that, I have some very unique perspectives on my world because of how I carried myself growing up, the things I did when I was growing up, the, the artsy side of me, the outgoing side of me, the side of me that took dance and wanted to be a dancer, the side of me that wanted to be a comic book artist, the side of me that wanted to be a singer, a rapper. There's so many different facets of who I was growing up that I had an opportunity to sort of engage with a lot of these different communities. And uh, once I got old enough to go out and start socializing, I ran into like these stereotypical, like white, masculine, gay guys that they only had a very specific, narrow view of what it was to be a gay person. And so you get wrapped up with that. And it seems like you're always trying to be something that you're not. I tried. I would go to the gym. I'd work out. I'd buy the tight shirts. I'd try to dress the way they dress, look the way they look. And I was never happy with myself. I was never happy trying to conform into that world. Uh, and, and it was internalized homophobia. It was me trying to suppress who I was for a very short time in my life. Thank goodness it was a very tiny time and I didn't waste uh, a lot of my life trying to conform to anybody's standards. Uh, and I never have. 
<laughs> and even at my age now, like ever since that moment, and I and I was like, I'm never going to do this again. I've never done that. I've never conformed to anybody else's standards. I've always kind of danced to the beat of my own drum. And so, uh, seeing that, I was like, okay, so who is who sh- is my tribe? Who should I be socializing with? Who should I be hanging out with? Who are the people out there like me? And so I found the Bear community, which was a very supportive community in the '90s that accepted all different types of bodies, all different types of people, uh, didn't matter where you came from. You were, you were always accepted. Now, just like any community, there is toxicity within that community. Uh, but luckily for me, I didn't really experience it. The, the people that I hung out with were very much different than that. And so I, I aligned myself with that community. And for many years, that was a community that I was a massive part of. Now, as I've gotten older, I'm not so much a part of that community, but I still sort of identify with the people who are part of that world. So that's my little, that's my little pocket of, uh, of the gay community to be a part of is, is the bear community. I always say, Hey bears, when guys are coming to my channel, um, because no matter who you are, where you're coming from, you're coming in and I'm giving you a greeting as I would do, uh, to any of my friends at any point in time. Uh, however, internalized homophobia is really bad and you see it in different ways. It's sort of, uh, it comes across in different ways. Like when you have people that have a narrow view of masculinity, uh, that can be internalized homophobia. It can also be done with people who are not out, some people that are sitting around and hate being gay so much that that is expressed towards the gay community. So when a lot of people say, oh, if you talk about it so much, if you if you hate it so much, it's because you're hiding something. That's because there are cases of internalized homophobia where people do actually take that hatred of themselves and force it on everybody else sort of to make them feel better about themselves. They have to other people that are part of their own community. So yes, internalized homophobia can come from straight presenting people because that is how they're expressing it. They're stuck in this world where they are not comfortable being gay. They don't have a support system around them. They've doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on that negativity. And now they have to make sure at every possible conceivable turn that they are letting people know that they're not gay because they don't like this gay shit. And so that is how their homophobia is expressed. It's internalized and then it comes out that way. And there you have it. Um, Anyway, that's just my little story for the day. I am curious if anybody else out there has experienced this in their lives, whether it is something you have struggled with yourself or if it's something you've seen other people doing um, and you've had to deal with it uh, because uh, both sides of it are quite interesting, uh, no matter which way it is, whether it's you dealing with it or having to deal with other people who have it. Some people have experience with both. I've had experiences with both. So I understand how it works and and how that all plays out. Anyway, I am curious to see what you think about it. So leave me a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about all of this. And if you're not somebody who's in the gay community and you have questions about this type of stuff, let me know in the comments below and I would be happy to try and answer some of those for you. All right, have a great day and I will see everyone later. Bye.